so like so we did i don't know if you remember but we did a, a like an interview like last year in february yeah Yep, and I didn't, like, I got all of my audio, but I didn't get any of your audio. So when I went back to listen to it, it was, like, a bunch of me going, yep, yep, yeah, wow, and stuff like that. That's right. So now, I am so paranoid every time I do an interview that I have three different audio versions recording, so this will never happen again. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Ah. Thank you again for doing this for me since I was so ridiculous and didn't record our audio last time. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> um, but like you, this, I'm, I loved our interview last time so much because, you know, like, I mean, you know, I'm a huge fan of the pods and like, I think it's so useful for people to be able to like hear from you and like hear about them from your perspective since you built them. So I just think yeah. it's a really cool, it's a really, it's a really cool interview. So like, thanks again. All right. So we're going to start. Well, so, I'm very happy to spread the pod news at any opportunity that I'm given. So there you are. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, okay. So first let's start. How, how old is your avatar? Um, is, it'll be 15 years old in October. 15. I love like the, all of the interviews of the people that I've done recently, like everybody is pretty old like 12 15 so 15 is pretty old as well that's like not the beginning beginning though right that's like three yeah. years after or so yeah around about that yes i've been looking for something like this for a while um be before second life i was in a world called cybertown um uh that goes back uh, that was that was um that, interesting technology you could you could be in cybertown over a 56k modem because mm -hmm. um because of the way it works you know so much was i suppose client side it didn't need to connect too much um and transfer too much traffic and um yeah um that closed down now i don't think it closed down it went pay and i didn't feel it was worth paying for the amount that they were asking um and since then, I've been looking for somewhere else. And uh, web searches, I found, I found Second Life through a web search, not by word of mouth. And then there you were. And there I was. Did you find yeah. the, the learning curve difficult when you started? No, and I'll tell you why not. Um, because the orientation island, I just threw myself into it. And I got into it really pretty quick. Yeah. Um, within a couple of um, months, I had written my first script and, and was building simple things no I, d I don't think it is i mean yes there is a steep learning curve but if you are prepared to get into it you know if you're prepared to throw yourself into it if you know it's what you want you learn it quite quickly right oh no i yeah i definitely agree when i started too like i was pretty immediately hooked it's like barbie's only way cooler you know i mean once i figured yeah. out you could change the way that they looked and then there were like lots of people and that was it i was fucked so okay so how did you get the idea for the pods oh my goodness um remember 15 years ago <laughs> yeah because because you are pretty much going back 15 years because the the origin of the pod uh, and, and you know it's still up on marketplace pod v1 Mm -hmm. um, was I wanted a different way of doing teleports. I'd seen um, teleporting. I thought, well, how does this work? And, and it's a bit, you know, you just go straight there. Um, and it's like, what happened in between? Um, and I thought, well, it would be much more interesting to have something that you could just ride to do it. So Pod V1, which is still on the marketplace for, I don't know, a few hundred pounds. I don't know, it's 300, 300 Lindens. It, it's, it's, it's a simple just moves somebody in a straight line from one place to another and and it just seems i mean maybe it comes back to me my real life when i go on holiday for example i drive i don't fly because mm -hmm. i like what's in between you know i like to get a perspective on things maybe that i've never thought of this before but maybe that's got something to do with why i wanted to do that you know even if i'm going all the way from wales to switzerland i don't fly i drive and obviously get a boat somewhere along the line um because i have a perspective of what's around me then uh so teleports yeah what's what's happened between your start place and your end place you, you've just moved there and you've got no idea no concept of how they relate to each other unless you know the area already oh uh, maybe it's that i don't know 
uh, but the, the the basic move from one position to another script was one of my earliest scripts. It's 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 fairly simple, but you know I'd written that within a matter of uh, not too many months after being in Second Life, and uh, it actually developed from that and became more and more. Um, I then had the idea of well, you know, I can do that. I could also make it go via somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And so that was the next stage. Uh, and so along came pod version three with a few more options. And then, then, and I think it was about after I started selling that one and it got quite popular, the movement was non-physical. And this probably won't mean much to most people, but, but non-physical movement in the old days looked quite pleasing to the idea, to the eye. It was, it was quite nice. Um, and I don't know if somebody tweaked some with some, something tweaked with some updates, but it stopped being so pleasing to the eye. Uh, and people who got pods were suddenly saying, oh, it looks jerky now. And they were right, it did suddenly look jerky. Um, and so I had to look into how to solve that. And so I had to learn about Second Life Physics. And that's why the current pod we're riding is physical. And um, that's where that came from, basically. Yeah, and I think I remember in the first one you said they kind of work how, like, they're not actually driving, like, it, they're, like, being pushed, right? They're being pushed from one point to another? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Um, so what we've got here, the way that the, the that it works, which I, I haven't seen in other vehicles where I've, where I've known how they do work, Um is that the pods uh, have got a constant force pushing them behind them in effect, pushing them in the direction that I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So that produces a smooth physical movement. The angle, when you see it changing angles, that's calculated um, in three dimensions and it moves to to points in the direction um, that it's supposed to be heading, but it's got a constant force behind it. Um, Normally, with, with most physical vehicles, which aren't driven, what you have is commands to move to a certain location. And that does produce a little bit of non-constant speed, the way that it does it. Um, so you can see that sometimes in some non- in some physical vehicles. Um, with physical vehicles which you drive, they are actually putting force behind. When you press, the, for example, the arrow key, um, which is usually the, the key for going forwards, mm-hmm. um, it's putting that force behind you. So in effect, it's doing what a driven vehicle would do, but without the driver. I know. And, and I think that's my very favorite thing about the pod is like, I don't have to do anything. I can just sit here. If I want to go fast, I can make it go fast. If I want to go slow, I can go slow. And all I can do is just focus on looking around it's like having a chauffeur. It's great. <laughs> and it always goes in the same direction. That's right. It always exactly. goes in the plan's direction. Yeah. Yep. I do these because I want people to ride them. Um, right. I put them out on the roads because I know that a lot of people get a lot of pleasure out of it. Um, I'm very keen on promoting them. If you want me to promote the pods, anyone wants me to promote the pods, then please let me know um tell you where yeah <laughs> if, if you want to know more you can come and chat in our pods discord group oh um, that's right yeah you do have a pods discord group we do have a pod discord group as well as a pod riders in world group and if you go to pod riders in world group you'll find the, the invites to the discord group where you can come and have a chat that pod um, riders dis um in world group is huge too there's like two thousand people in it or something yeah um it's, it's grown quite big hasn't it i suppose every <laughs> time you sit on the on the pod you you get the opportunity for for an invite mm-hmm. um I, I i would like to actually you know i'd like to thank two people especially um who who've helped me a huge amount recently mismantled uh, famously dismantled and holocluck henley doc henley who have helped me out hugely, especially in the last year and a half. Um, uh, I was one of those unfortunate ones who went and got long COVID. Oh, no. right from the beginning, back in March last year. Um, I'm uh, as good as fully recovered now, um, but it it really took me, um, took it out of me, and and they really helped quite a lot to to run the, 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 um, the system, you know, keep an eye on system in world to make sure everything was good. Um, I'd also particularly like to thank uh, Starshiner Doors 
um, who has actually done most of the work for the SLB for the last two years, whilst I've not been quite on, on top of things as much as I would like to be. And certainly it was absolutely essential last year that somebody else did it. I was not in a position to do it. Um, so, so yeah, those, those, those people have, have also um, played a significant part, especially in the last uh, couple of years um, in, in the pods. And there are a few other um, pod stations which aren't owned by me, they're owned um, by other people and they like to have the pods uh, coming to their place and they're in um, strategic positions, so I was very happy to do that. This highway that we're on right now, I actually found out about on the Second Life forums. Somebody posted a picture of this and they tagged me in it because they know that like I like to ride and, and uh, do the videos right. about the different podcasts and they're like, look! Have you been on this one yet? And I said no. And then when I got in touch with you, and I was like, "This is the one that I'm going to take Yvonne on." So um, pretty cool, isn't it? I do like yeah. it. It's um, I, it was um, this route is one of the older ones because you're on the continent now where I first the continent of, of what was first lands for me and became my first pod station in the days when Linden Lab did first lands and you could buy your first land for one linden per square meter and you had to buy 512 square meters worth yeah. and that's now a pod station and it was the first pod station because very luckily it was by a road uh, actually it wasn't quite by a road when it was made but a neighbor offered to swap some and it became by a road by a road mm -hmm. and it was very close so i had this um place by a road and that was partly what inspired me to put the pods out on the road i got this teleport system which became a more advanced teleport system and then then i thought well actually i wonder what happens if you put it on the road does it work because at that time i hadn't even really learned about what linden labs do with their um, parcel permissions and i looked and sure enough it works and i thought hmm, this is good um let's put the pods on a little trip up and down the road and, mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it developed from there and then I thought, well, okay, I'll make a complete route of it and do a tour or two. And this was one of the older ones, the one that we're on now. I can't remember how old this one is, which one this was, but it, this would be probably, yeah, this, this tour was probably made 10 years ago. So cool. I love that history. Like, that's that's awesome. That <laughs> You know, the Second Life is as old it is, as it is, and this script you know is 10 years old and it still works and it looks it good you know <laughs> the, the, the script actually um it's got updated scripts in it but actually on this route it, the, the scripts aren't doing any more than the old ones would there might be a few bug fixes but there's also potential for new commands which this route being an old one doesn't use hmm. but you cool. would have noticed that probably anyway <laughs> no i just ride <laughs> so okay so how many total like pods or tours do you have in operation on all of the continents take a guess 40 that's a lot <laughs> yeah. did you do pods in like belisaria and the new you know the linden land areas and stuff too uh do you know i can't do them on belisaria and the reason is because the roads on belisaria the linden um parcels um have got no object entry set on them i oh. could i could have some sort of station there probably where people would just come along and get on and it would go um which is which is fine but the, the problem there is if the pods aren't going constantly mm -hmm. if, you know if a pod doesn't go past once in a while most people would never find out about them it's you know, true. This is something, and, and this is something which I felt, mm, you know, slightly wary about when I first did it. Is this okay? And I approached the Linden, who was in charge of um, this sort of thing, you know, m mainland, what was it mainland infrastructure? Was it at the time? It was Blonde in Linden. Uh, he left the lab um, not long after I spoke to him, <laughs> but, uh, um, and and just just to seek their approval to make sure that they were happy with it. And yeah, he said no problem. So and. Um, as so long as you're not, I can't remember that this was this his words or whether it was my offer to him. Uh, I said um, I wouldn't um, carry advertising on the pods, and I've never done that. Um, you know, it's just got a small YS symbol to show who produces it for JavaScript, and and that's it. And that's why the pods um, deliberately don't make any money um, um, from from the trips themselves. Obviously, 
if somebody buys the system, I, I, I can <laughs> help pay for my pod stations. Sure, other sure. Than that, other than that, I won't try to make money out of the tours. I, I, I feel that they themselves are purely because I like to do things which are nice for people. Right. Yeah, I think I found that to be the case with like a lot of scripters in Second Life. You've kind of got two types. You've got the type that like make their stuff and make a lot of money. And then you have the type that are like, ah, oh, this is fun. I just made this. Here you go. You know? And so that doesn't surprise me that you put all this time and effort into something that, you know, for people to enjoy. But I'm sure people buy your pod system too. Yeah, they do. And 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 yes, it that does actually pretty much almost exactly pay um, as it happens coincidentally for, for the land usage for the pod stations. I don't mm-hmm. take money out of Second Life, but um, it's nice that I don't really have to spend much money to keep going with it either because that keeps things going. Yeah, that's. I think it's good when Second Life can pay for itself, you know? Yeah. So we know about the ones that you did first. What were your? What's the most recent pod route that you did? Have you done anything new with pods? Yeah, I have. I have got one this year, um, and it's um, M, M for Mother Four, mm-hmm. um, which is um, the continent of. Well, some people call it My Balea, some people call it Satori. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I use the M designation is because there's another continent which begins with S, and each pod has got a, a, a code. So this one that we're on now is J for Jogot. Yeah, uh, I can't remember which number it is. I can uh, can find it. it's J two. This one is. Yeah, so this is J two. Yeah, this is J two. Yeah, and so M four runs up the east coast of my Balea Strokes Satori. Um, starts at uh, one of my newest pod stations, which is I think the correct correct pronunciation would be something like Nihole. <laughs> or Nijol, I suppose you might say. <laughs> yep, I have, I always wanted to do a game where it's like name that sim, you know, and I'll I'll list like the the thirty most difficult ones I can find, and you you attempt to to say them, <laughs> or name anyway. that region. Sorry, not sim region. Anyway, um, yeah, that one that one that one goes down the east coast road and then jumps over into the sea and goes up as a boat um, up along the east coast. And uh, yeah, it's a, about an hour long uh, ride. That's the newest one. So I know some people have asked if you're ever going to update the way that the pods look. And I know that that's like, that's a pretty tall order, right? Because they change shape and do stuff. It's more complicated than just changing it, right? Well, well, for quite a few reasons, because one of the things I do with them is the pods will change shape. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a pod now. And I think this this one is a pod all, all the way around. It doesn't change. But mm-hmm. other routes will change to a boat, to a rail car. Um, to a balloon. Yeah, the air or balloons the are submarine. my faves. I haven't yeah. seen the submarine. Oh, i got to find the submarine yeah, now. Submarine. Um, yeah, try, the, the best one to get for, for submarine early on in the ride would be the N1, Nautilus 1, which goes from um, the Garrity, um ballroom location on the west coast of my Balea and goes okay. up through, um, through Nautilus. There you are. There's, there's a that's where you'll see a submarine quite early on. I'm going to totally do that. That'll be, <laughs> that's on my list then. So have, do you know like what your average number of riders are, you know, in like a day or a week or a month or whatever? The trouble is that, that when crashes happen, the uh, length of time doesn't, uh, doesn't get recorded. And so far today, you, you know, you have roughly a rider a minute. Uh, uh, um, well, not a rider a minute. You have roughly... Um, Every minute, every, all the time, roughly on average, one person is riding a pod somewhere. That's um, a, that's a we, really cool statistic. <laughs> and it's it's may, remains about that. Um, I've got, um, you know, the the server runs in in UTC at which, and it's currently UTC time is um, twenty twenty in the evening, and the total completed ride time is twenty hours and nineteen minutes. There you go. Wow. So it's almost exact. <laughs> Uh, number of unique riders today, number of people have experienced the rides are 72 at this stage. So there you are. Cool. That is a pod. There is somebody on a pod in every minute in Second Life. I love that. On and, average. On yeah, average. on average. And probably a lot of those are me, to be fair. <laughs> I know that you have a ballroom, right? I do, yes. Tell me about your ballroom. <laughs> But I absolutely love classical music. I'm a mm-hmm. bit of a classical music geek, I suppose you'd call me. I don't know. 
So one of the first things I did when I bought that, I actually bought the next bit of land after my first land, was made it into a classical ballroom. It's called Ger Ashi, which mm-hmm. is Welsh for by the sea, basically. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, it's the oldest, longest running classical ballroom in Second Life. Wow, that's a pretty big claim to fame, too. Is it busy? Do you have a lot of people? <laughs> Not these days. The, the, the thing is, I don't do so much with it as I used to. Um, uh, I, I I did quite a lot. I used to hold um, quite a few weekly events. I still have one weekly event there. It's on a Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Second Lifetime, where we have um, somebody who, who presents um, on the piano. Uh, he doesn't play the piano, but he sits at the piano and because if he was playing it. Yeah, there you go, yeah. That's the good thing about Um, Second Life. And presents presents an hour and a half programme of, um, oh, yesterday it was opera at the piano. Um, So, for example. Sounds like it would be perfect for date night. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a cla- and there's a pod station just below the ballroom. There you go. So you can ride a pod to get there. (laughs) You can, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so this is a question that I ask pretty much everybody that I do an interview with. So if you had a magic wand and you could wave this wand and it would it would make something, you know, it would do something for Second Life, like you could change something or make something better, what would you do? Uh, I would get rid of the concept of the sim um, so that it was one continual um, area so that we didn't have to ever worry about sim crossings again. That's a That would be an awesome wish for sure. It would. Uh, and, you know... Um, Technically, there's no reason why that can't be done if you were building a world from scratch. Uh, obviously, right now, with all the code that's written for the service and all that, it would be a, a huge problem to, to change it and probably unfeasible. Mm-hmm. But, uh, that's why it needs a magic wand. Do you have any places that like you're like, man, I wish I could get a pod station there? Um, not now, no. Um, uh, I say that. I mean, if, if Linden Labs did want to uh, me to open a pod station in the areas where the land is currently no object entry, I'd, I'd be very happy to do that. And I have been recently um, looking at the possibility of doing more on Zindra because Zindra has a very limited pod service for the reason of uh, some of their uh, land there being no object entry, in fact, quite a lot of it being. So I've been talking to them a bit about that but then i got a bit distracted so i should talk to them a bit more but they have helped me to open up a a route along the south side of of zindra recently now zindra is the adult one right that's right yeah yeah i don't know if i'll ever get to do a pod ride there because of you know (laughs) all of the show the video to so many people you pass something which is a little bit yeah (laughs) everything would be blurred out (laughs) but yeah no i i your pods are so great Nirvana, and just you know i can't say enough i figure the, the the bigger names that we have that you know ride them and tell people about them then you'll maybe we'll get it up to like 10 people a minute which would be super that cool that would be great yeah that would be great that would be I mean, um you know I, I should say another one of my big motivations um for doing this is uh I think the decline in mainland has been stopped and probably reversed, Um, uh, looking around. Um, But, you know, 10 years ago, people were abandoning mainland. Um, I know, uh, it's so sad. Abandoning it in huge numbers and going out to private islands. Yep. And and once you're on a private island, you're isolated. (laughs) You know, you're not going to get any passing traffic, which, you know, if you just want a place to go and you know, canoodle with your yeah. whoever. Yeah, then, yeah, then, yeah. Then fine. <laughs> yeah. Then, then, then fine. Um, but but you miss so much. You miss community. You miss neighbours. Um, the, you know, one of the things that, that, that Linden Labs, I think, really got right, and they got quite a lot of things really right from the start, uh, but one of them was the concept of the of the LDPW, the, the Linden Department of Public Works. Yep. And... Who, who went out and built things like this road that we're on now yep. um, and provided this instru- infrastructure for all to enjoy, to try to find a community, to make some sense of community. Yep. The communities have succeeded in some places, not succeeded in others, but they weren't going to succeed at all if this, were, if this wasn't it. You need this here to do it. 
um, to create a world. Because without mainland, it's not really a world. It's a collection of separate islands. Yep. Um, and 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 that is to me that is you know not really any better than many other social media platforms exactly because you're just creating a, a little world for yourself to live in and mates you know i can put up um i can put up a, a what do you call it an open sim server on my own machine and that would do the job mm-hmm. uh, and uh, without second life without without mainland second life would be a shadow of what it currently is and uh, and by you, you know mainland roads are here you do see it sometimes see people going along it driving along it we've seen one person on this trip already yeah but but quite often it's very quiet um and unless you can unless you can put movement into it it you know it, it's going to be dead look yeah a little bit dead you know? yeah um and and I I like to think that I've contributed to to bringing back some life to mainland. Um, I one hundred percent agree. Right. <laughs> I think the and I think the pods are so um, vital, especially for abandoned land. I have to. I'm really really big into rehabbing abandoned land. Like the, part of the reason I ride the pods is I check out abandoned land parcels that are next to the roads. And then I snag right. them up and then I build them yeah. out and then I sell them back to residents for like 2,500 Linden. It's got like a house and, you know, something yeah. easy. So anybody can just, you know, have access to a pod and they've got a nice mesh house and they didn't spend a million yeah. dollars. And then the yeah. land isn't abandoned. You know, it's it yeah. looks like somebody's living there because, yeah. I mean, the Linden homes are nice and, you know, they're beautiful and everything. But I just think mainland is so special. I mean, you can ride a boat from one continent to another, which is crazy, you know. Yes, yes, and now they've actually linked up the um, um, the continents with a long uh, channel between. Where is it between uh, uh, Sansara and my Balea Satori? Yep. Um, I haven't actually looked into doing anything with that yet. I haven't really had time. You'll um, get to it. I, I might do. But it's it, it could be a bit tricky because of um, of object entry permissions on on the route. But I I might look at that yet. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll see this video and go, oh yeah, we got to turn that on, and then they'll turn it on, and you can just do it. Well, yeah, and and you know I've I've, I've talked to to various Lindens at various times about it, and um, and I've had some good good discussions in the last um, couple of years actually. Uh, um, but yeah. I need to get back and, and have another chat because it's been a very strange year with all that's been going on with the uh, with sure all yeah sorts oh, absolutely of um, and um, yeah there, there's a lot more that I could do um, I tend to be quiet in the summer because the long daylight hours outside means I don't get online so much I've got other interests outside and <laughs> yep well and, and you know real life is room. important too <laughs> <laughs> real life's important to me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Second life is awesome, but real life is good too. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And I'm going to, I'm going to free you so you don't have to stay here forever.